someday, don't know. Hello, my sweet and wonderful friends, and welcome to another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Uh, for this edition, I need you guys to give a great, big, wonderful, warm, and welcoming shout out to Yo Schiller, who is editing this here roundup. He's going to be helping out with a lot of the editing duties around here. A lot of the roundups will be him. Maybe all the roundups will be him. We're not exactly sure yet. Uh, Kane is busy working on other stuff. We got a lot of big projects coming up. Uh, this whole, like, now through the holiday season is going to be crazy. Lots of great content. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. So that is why Yo Schiller is helping. So give him a give him a hug. Give me a give him a look at and see and talk to hug whatever. I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's get let's get started. I'm recording this on Wednesday. Nintendo just had their uh, their treehouse for Age of Calamity and Pikmin 3 Deluxe today. Um, but you know, a lot of people are trying to avoid spoilers for those games. So I will be talking about them a little bit, um, but I will save it for the end of the roundup. Uh, for now, naturally, the very big news for this week was. Steve, Minecraft, Minecraft Steve, coming to Smash. They did it, they did it. I can't believe they did it. I was very delighted by the news. I just think it's so just weird and crazy. And there was once a time when I thought like, oh, that's that's too ridiculous, you know? I, I don't know. And then like I start, I warmed up to the idea more and more over time, even though I didn't think it would happen anyway. So when it did, I was so pleasantly surprised. I'm not gonna go super far into it. Um, you know, it's, it's news, news news show, not just a, not just an opinion show, uh, but I, I did see a lot of people, so many people, so grumpy about Steven Smash. I just, Minecraft is such a big deal. It's such a big deal. It's such a big game for so many people. It's the biggest game of all time. Its representation in Smash is so cool to me. Nintendo just, I don't know, including just so many games from all over the place. Like, yeah, it's weird, and I've even said, like, as a character, it just seemed, like, a little strange. Like, it doesn't exactly fit, but that's that's why I think it's so fun. It's just so different and weird. I love that they did it. Sorry if you feel grumpy about it, but so many people are so psyched right now. I don't even play Minecraft. I don't, I don't want to play Minecraft. I don't know Minecraft. I don't even know what a Steve is. <laughs> but I just think it's cool. And speaking of Steve, Daniel Kaplan, a former business developer at Mojang, revealed that the companies started talking about bringing Steve to Smash as much as five years ago. So um, it, it really seems like it was something that both companies really wanted to make happen. And I just think that's super duper cool. They just, you know, that's why when they went to Sakurai, Sakurai they're like, of course you can make it happen, right? No, that's gonna be too hard, but you can, right? Yeah, okay, I guess I can. And in other Smash news, Nintendo revealed new Mii Fighter costumes. The most notable are definitely Bomberman and Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes. It's funny because I kind of thought Travis Touchdown had a pretty good chance of getting in uh, as a, you know, as an actual fighter, just because No More Heroes 3 is coming out. And they're going to want to, you know, promote that. And then, uh, and then Bomberman has always been a potential one. He's a pretty classic character. So um, these are hard deconfirms if anything <laughs> if anything is going to deconfirm a character it is a uh, it is a me fighter costume but it is at least cool that they have representation in the game now so that's pretty neato also nintendo revealed banjo kazooie terry and byleth amiibo which are looking pretty darn good i might just have to get that banjo kazooie i don't know i oh he's on the jiggy and everything i really like that I might just have to get that one. I would be surprisingly, like, I'm surprised by how interested I would be in Byleth just because I actually played Fire Emblem Three Houses. And, uh, you know, I at least have some connection to the character. I might be more tempted if it was female Byleth because that's the one that I played and I don't have as much of a connection to male Byleth. I don't know. So at this point, I'm like, maybe Banjo-Kazooie though. Yeah, so I'm gonna give it like a 90% on that one. And funny enough, it seems like Nintendo might have accidentally revealed the release window for these amiibo. It seems they tweeted an image saying that they would be coming out fall next year, but then deleted the tweet. So that's weird. I don't know why they would even have that promotional material ready if they weren't ready to post it. I don't know, was it totally in error or really did they actually reveal it and they just didn't mean to post it this early? Um, whatever the case though, if if it does end up being fall next year, that is a long way away. Um, I do understand, I mean, obviously, it's the pandemic, things get delayed, um, but that still seems far away. It's it, like, if, if any Amiibo are releasing anytime soon, it seems weird that they would have to wait until, I mean, like, fall next year, that's a year away. If they can't, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I really can't say, I don't know what their process is, but that, I'd find that very strange. Even even in light of all of everything that's going on, 
That's weird. That would be very strange. I hope that was just overall a mistake and that was why they deleted it because it was just plain wrong. It'd be cool if it was like, oh, we just got the 2021 part wrong. It's actually fall 2020, sometime this fall. That'd be cool. I don't know if that'll happen, but we'll see. The Pokemon Company has revealed physical bundles containing one of either Pokemon Sword or Shield and also all of the uh, the DLC, the whole entire expansion pass. This was actually revealed in all of the Pokemon information we got last week. The only reason I bring it up here is because I forgot to talk about it last time and that is only important because I just wanted to say how ugly I think the box art is. <laughs> I just, I don't know why I thought that was important to bring. I just, I wanted to talk about it. It's just so ugly. Pokemon box art is already usually ugly. It's just a PNG of the legendary on a whatever. And just this and the white background and then the words and then the image on the box. It just looks terrible. It looks awful. It will look very, very bad on the shelf. I don't, I don't know what they're, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> anyway, Pokemon Company has also revealed a uh, new competition is coming up in Pokemon Sword and Shield featuring legendary and mythical Pokemon. I do think this is pretty cool, although I must say it is a little bit weird to have a like full legendary and mythical competition so shortly before you're about to release some DLC where people can catch all of the legendaries in all of the games. It's just kind of weird to be like, legendary tournament, but before you get all the legendaries you're about to get, I don't, I don't really understand, but hey, whatever. They can do whatever they want, I guess. I'm not there, I'm not there, mom. Nintendo has put out something of a PSA suggesting that people make sure that they charge their Switches at least twice a year. This is, of course, to maintain a proper battery health for the system. I you'd think you'd probably be pretty hard-pressed to find too many people that aren't just, you know, keeping their Switches charged, like, in the docks and, like, playing them a bunch. But sure, if you happen to be listening to this and you just don't play your Switch just about ever, Make sure you charge it at least twice in an entire year. It's good I, It's good to know, I guess, right? I don't know. In Animal Crossing news, in the latest update, Nintendo has once again removed a common hacked item from the game. In this case, it was a special kind of fence that you could only find on Harv's Island, and I guess people just liked the fence, so they hacked the game so they could get the fence, and now the game is updated and all the fences are gone. So naturally, this is disappointing to many players, especially those who argue that this is a very uh, harmless kind of hack, just like uh, the, you know, the star pieces and trees kind of thing. But it's always understandable. Nintendo doesn't want people messing with the game in any way that is not designed to be that way, especially because it could confuse players into like being like, why can't I find this thing? Um, so yeah, it's understandable. The newest update also introduced a bug where some certain titles were not showing up on people's passports. Uh, this is a, I had not even heard of this bug and it seems that a lot of people just, I mean, you'd have to like really specifically go and look at your passport and have the exact titles that weren't showing up. But whatever the case, Nintendo has identified the problem and is promising a fix coming soon. And uh, that's it for Animal Crossing news. Actually, one of the lighter Animal Crossing news weeks. We usually get a, we usually get a whole bunch there. Super Mario Brothers 35 released recently. Go check out my video on it if you want to see my thoughts on it and tell me how bad I am at the game, even though I'm complaining about how I'm not dying and that's making the game go on too long. It's and, uh, bad because of that. I don't really... <laughs> I don't really get it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it seems that people have already figured out how to hack the game. Uh, we are seeing a lot of players that have, like, you know, gathering 9,999 coins allegedly in one match, which is, of course, absurd and impossible. So people be cheating. People always love to be cheating. It's disappointing. But hopefully Nintendo is working on some sort of patch or something. I don't even know exactly how people hack the game. Uh, at the very least, Nintendo has uh, taken down a YouTube video showing people how to do it. Uh, so they're at least aware of the issue. So perhaps they will do something about it later. Who knows? And speaking of Super Mario Bros. 35, it wasn't very long ago that there was a, uh, a fan-made Battle Royale Mario game, which was uh, very similar. Nintendo had it taken down and then not too long after revealed Mario 35, leading a lot of people to believe that they had uh, ripped off the idea or something. Uh, but we have confirmation now that this idea has been in the works for quite a long time. It actually predates Tetris 99, which I find uh, very, uh, very surprising. 
It feels like Tetris 99 has been out for quite a while now, and this idea, I mean, it could just be they were tinkering, tinkering around with the idea back then. I don't know how long it's been in active development. Uh, it doesn't seem like, uh, just based on my impressions, not the most, uh, I don't know, developed product. It seems a little bare bones in ways. Uh, so it's weird to me they've been working on it for that long. Uh, but again, like I said, maybe it was just an idea back then or something, but we at least have confirmation. No, Nintendo did not, <laughs> did not rip off the idea. They had the idea. They had it taken down, obviously, because the idea was so similar and because they don't like fan games, which is a whole topic <laughs> for another day, I guess. So the law firm, again with this, Kim, Kimically, Schwartz, Kreiner, and Donaldson Smith. These guys have been locked in a fairly long legal battle with Nintendo. This is the whole Joy-Con drift thing. This is a class, a class action lawsuit. Uh, you know, they're trying to get some justice for this, which I will always remind everyone. That's awesome. That's great. A anybody and everybody should sue Nintendo. This is a, this is a very serious problem that Nintendo is not, uh, is not addressing. They've actually begun to collect evidence, uh, video evidence, of the whole Joy-Con issue. They're inviting people to send in video testimonials about their experiences with Joy-Con drift and all that. However, some some nastiness recently arose uh, thanks to this little piece of their quote here. This will be helpful to us in responding to Nintendo's arguments about how this isn't a real problem or hasn't caused anyone any inconvenience. So I'm I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to get on my high horse here, but I do. Feel, I'm a little bit disappointed in a lot of publications. I feel that they've been um, jumping onto this quote and basically presenting this quote as though it's coming straight from Nintendo, even though it's just like it's. It's like basically a like they're paraphrasing here. It seems like they're paraphrasing. We don't know what Nintendo has said. A lot of people have pointed out that maybe Nintendo is taking this stance because they don't want to be found liable. And by admitting that there's a problem means they're gonna lose the case. So they have to pretend there's not a problem. But that goes against uh, the stuff that Furukawa has said. He's actually come out and kind of apologized for it. Said they're kind of looking into it. Nintendo has not done enough to fix it. Don't get me wrong. They have not, <laughs> they have absolutely not. But I don't think it's fair how everybody has been basically putting words in Nintendo's mouth because of this. I mean, almost every major publication I've seen is like, Nintendo, colon, this isn't a real problem and hasn't caused anyone any inconvenience. That's not exactly fair. Look, I want, I want Nintendo to pay for all this. <laughs> I really do. They're really dropping the ball, but I think it's a little bit silly to jump to conclusions like this. Obviously, if I can get, you know, we can get those words to come out of Nintendo, then I'll be the first in line to be like, that's messed up. That's just a lie. It's super ignorant. Um, but at the moment, I can't exactly go that far. That's just them saying that. That's them basically just, well, I mean, Nintendo, they, they don't think it's a problem. It's, it's, it hasn't been, I don't know. I don't know exactly where they got those words or if that really is just their paraphrasing. So anyway, that was the whole point I wanted to make. So yeah, I don't know if there's any truth in that, but I do wish these folks luck. And if you want to go send them a, a you know video talking about how your Joy-Cons all drift, then that you know, go do it. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'm kind of considering doing it myself. I bought my Switch. My Joy-Cons started drifting. I had them replaced. They started drifting. I borrowed some from my friends. They started drifting. I still need to replace those ones. Yeah, drift. It's a problem. It's a real problem. Not for everybody, but for a whole lot of people. And in other Joy-Con lawsuit related news, because these stories seem to be a uh, progressively more and more common as of late. A woman and her 10 year old son are also filing a class action lawsuit against Nintendo because of this whole issue. They rightfully claim, defendant continues to market and sell the products with full knowledge of the defect and without disclosing the Joy-Con drift defect to consumers in its marketing, promotion, or packaging. Defendant has had a financial motive to conceal the defect as it did not want to stop selling the products and or would need to expend a significant amount of money to cure the defect. That is, that is all true. So again, good thumbs up for me. Uh, they are seeking $5 million in damages. Um, I've seen a lot of people react poorly to this. They don't want $5 million. This is, a, this is another class action lawsuit. This would be paid out to everybody who had experienced the problem because it is a very big problem that has affected many people, millions of people. I don't even know if that would cover it. It probably wouldn't. All of the people who have had, who have been negatively impacted by this, I, I don't even know $5 million split up between them would actually do it, but I wish them the best of luck. I report on Nintendo, I play Nintendo games, I love Nintendo, and I hope they get 
sued. I have to be open about that. I hope they somebody successfully sues them and they are forced to face this problem and fix it. I don't know if it's just like in the manufacturing level, they literally can't or like it would cost too much money. I don't know. They need to be open about it. They need to find a way to fix it. If there's no way to fix it, figure out a way to fix it. There's got to be a way. Fix the problem. Drift bad. No good. No good Nintendo drift bad. Okay, I got to move on. Here's another lawsuit related story, though this one is uh, much more in Nintendo's favor. A while back, Nintendo filed a lawsuit against Uberchips.com and Team Executor for producing and selling tools that enable people to hack their Switches and pirate games. Nintendo has finally and probably predictably won the lawsuit, and the payout is $2 million. All of these people will also be forced to destroy any tools that they have made and, you know, naturally stop selling them. In addition to all this, two members of Team Executor have actually been arrested. This is, um, I don't know exactly how much of this is related directly to the whole piracy thing, because it looks like some, like, unrelated charges, like a conspiracy to commit money laundering. That's, uh, that kind of, that goes a little bit far beyond allowing people to hack their switches there. So I don't, I don't think I really know the, the whole story. One of the guy's names is Gary Bowser, which is just... I've never seen a real Bowser in the world in my entire life, and now I only know them, like, related to Nintendo stuff. I, I don't know. It's a little bit funny, I guess. I mean, the getting arrested and all that, the felony stuff, that's not really funny. Um, again, I don't really know the whole story, um, but I will say this is all, it's all predictable. I must re, re, reiterate. I know not everybody hacking their switches is doing so for piracy reasons, but you can't deny that that is something people can do with hack switches. So naturally, Nintendo, I mean, like, it's one thing to alter your own hardware, but then to produce tools and sell them to people for profit so that they can then steal Nintendo's games. It's, um, just legally, I don't, I don't understand, I don't, I don't get people. I don't understand why anyone would ever think that was okay. <laughs> I don't know why they would ever think they weren't going to get arrested or sued for $2 million. But I don't know. You may remember that Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Japan was originally scheduled to open uh, this previous summer uh, to uh, coincide with the Tokyo Olympics. And naturally, because of current events, they delayed the opening for the foreseeable future. Um, but it seems that they have come back around and are now saying that they will be opening in spring 2021, which is not very far away. And that will certainly be cool if it's true, though I am pretty darn skeptical. This is, of course, a very, very big topic for, well, not even for another video. Not really stuff I talk about on my channel, uh, but I'll just say I'm skeptical. Just the way things have been going, it doesn't feel like things are going to be back to normal enough for everybody to cram themselves into a new theme park by spring next year. I mean, it'd be cool if that did happen. I don't know if it will, um, but we'll see, I guess. Nintendo also revealed that a new Mario-themed store and a Mario-themed cafe would be going in at Universal Studios Japan, not in the uh, Super Nintendo World area, but in the original, you know, the, the other park area. And they're even showing off some of the products that you can get. You can get these little, like, uh, these little Mario and Luigi cap dessert things that I, you know, I want to eat. Like 12 of, 12 or 13, 14, maybe rounded up to 15, that'd be really nice. These desserts feature famous Mario and Luigi catchphrases such as Okie dokie and Who's Cap? I don't I don't recall off the top of my head what that second one is from, but it's gotta be from something, right? Let's -a go! Who's Cap? What do you have to say about all this Mario action figure? <laughs> That's what I thought you'd say. And finally we come to the Pikmin 3 Deluxe and Age of Calamity stuff. If you don't wanna hear about those games and Shut the video off now. I'll make sure not to make any big crazy funnies that you will miss. The Nintendo Treehouse delved into a pretty good amount of information on Pikmin 3 Deluxe, uh, revealing much to my just merriment and glee, gyro controls are in the game uh, to simulate the pointer controls in the Wii U version. They also talked about a number of difficulty modes. There's a normal and a hard and an ultra spicy mode, which has got me so ex oh so excited i actually i i didn't record my reaction to the treehouse because i thought it's just a treehouse it's not even like a direct or anything and of course it's a pikmin related thing i realized how stupid that was because i ended up having some very strong reactions and i do wish that i had uh, recorded myself i did end up sending some very uh excited 
yelly messages to Kane so you can ask uh, ask him uh, what that uh, what that experience was like. Uh, naturally, Nintendo also went into Age of Calamity uh, a little bit before the Treehouse, so a couple days ago now. Uh, they released a new trailer revealing uh, er younger versions of the characters Robbie and Pira. I have some issues with Pura. I think I'm probably just going to save them for the review. Yeah, let's just save them. Uh, but anyway, today at the Treehouse, they revealed a whole bunch of really awesome stuff. Uh, they showed, like, the world map actually, like, represents the real world map from Breath of the Wild. And you go to all these different areas. Every time they show us a new area, they look like really faithful recreations of areas from the game, except, like, in uh, oftentimes, like, you know not destroyed and stuff, which is so, so cool. There's cooking, just like in the real game. You can find Koroks. They're hidden all over the place. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. I have to stop myself from just gushing and gushing and gushing because I will gush and I will gush and I will gush if I allow myself to. But basically, that's really the news. The news is just, it looks really cool. It looks super duper cool. Also, if you uh, pre-order the game at GameStop, you can get a uh, little Guardian keychain, which is funny that they are like, encouraging us to want this keychain even though we still don't know who this little guardian person is is it a character or something they didn't really tell us and i still really want to know they didn't really say but i want it anyway look how cute it is well that is it for today i hope you enjoyed this roundup i will see you again next week for another roundup presumably maybe nintendo will just randomly not release literally any news about anything for a whole entire week you never know could happen hasn't happened yet but we will see Goodbye, I love you, see you later.